morning. Let's stand to our feet in the presence of the Lord. The altars are open. You are welcome to come to the front this morning to worship. Praise the Lord. Let's just posture our hearts for worship. You know, we come to church, I think sometimes we think, what can I get out of this? And there's nothing wrong with that because we do come to receive. But also it should be, what can I bring, Lord? And then think about it. What are you bringing? Are you bringing your worries, your offense, your cares? Or are you bringing him your praise? Are you bringing him your heart this morning? So let's shake off the weak. Let's focus on the Lord. Just close your eyes right now. Just lift your hands. If you pray in the Spirit, just start praying in tongues. Just welcome Holy Spirit. This is not for entertainment. This is to worship the King of Kings. In Psalms it says, my soul longs. Does your soul long for the Lord? Do you long for Jesus this morning? Not that he's not with you, but do you long for this deep relationship that he offers to us? Yes, it even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. So right now, just come on, welcome him with your words. You don't need to wait for worship. We don't need to wait for instruments. Praise you, Jesus. We welcome you. Come on, lift up those voices. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place. We come to honor you in this place. You are King and our Lord. You are worthy of our praise. Just engage your heart this morning. Lift up those voices. We are so low. We love you, Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. Let go of every distraction. We focus on you. We come to praise you and honor you. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's give a shout for Jesus this morning. Your man. 
your love surrounds us. You're the reason we came to encounter your love. Your love surrounds us. You surround us. surround us you surround spirit of God fall fresh on us we need your prayer on us we need your presence your kingdom come your will be done here as in heaven spirit of God fall fresh on us
would exercise their faith and just tap into God's electrical socket, into the very power of life itself. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And we come to you today, Lord, for this life. We honor you today. We ask that you be on everything that we do in this place. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Why don't you go around the row and greet two or three people before yeah. you get comfortably seated. Praise the Lord. I don't think we have any first-time visitors today, and that's okay. Man, <clears throat> I felt the hunger in worship. That was awesome. Holy Spirit will move where there's hunger. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. I will get through these announcements. Just. <laughs> Somebody had watched a video of me doing um, flow time. <laughs> they said she's like she's in a trance. <laughs> I'm like, you just don't know. <laughs> you just don't know how good he is and the weight of his Shekinah glory. <sighs> she's like she lost her mind. Yeah, I did. And I got the mind of Christ now. Thank God. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. I'm going somewhere. Just give me a minute. <laughs> oh, I am. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. I'd rather have a small church with a bunch of fired up believers than a big church with dead religion. Not that big churches have dead religion. You can have both. You can have a big church with the fire of God. But I'll tell you, I'll take a small church, a wild people radical for the Lord, where the Holy Spirit moves, where people are being healed. Praise you, Jesus. Well, tonight we have Bible study at 6 p.m., so come and join us, men and women. women. <laughs> you got it. Men and women's Bible study. Women will meet in here. The men will meet in the room in the fellowship hall. Thank you, Peppers, for the amazing breakfast. Even though they ate all my sausage and bacon, I got a little to-go plate anyway. Okay, I'll take that. I'll wrap it up in a tortilla. Thank you so much for coming and doing that, setting up, cooking, cleaning up. We appreciate you. Wednesday night is prayer. Usually we do it the last Friday of the month, but we have such a busy weekend coming up next weekend with the <clears throat> church anniversary. We're going to move it to Wednesday night at 6.30 p.m. We will have child care up to age four. Uh, radical kids, radical youth will be with us in the service. Come hungry, come expecting, and it's going to be powerful. Come ready to pray. So that will be this Wednesday. And then the Wednesday after that is going to be our fall fest, which is going to be a lot of fun. A lot of laughs. We're going to have a nacho bar set up, desserts, candy for kids, a bunch of goofy people dressed up in 70s attire. I'm dressing up. Who's dressing up with me? Show me some hands that people are dressing up. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, y'all are coming back for that, right? Y'all told me y'all were. So y'all are coming to my house Wednesday, or when are y'all arriving? So, same in your house. You're the head, but she's the neck that turns the head. Same at your house. Okay. See, y'all can come Tuesday. See, if you can come Tuesday. We've got a lot of decorating to do. I just need you to help me move some stuff around. <laughs> that's right. Y'all are coming back. That's going to be a lot of fun. Man, that's going to be great. It's going to be a lot of silliness going on. I like to be silly. <laughs> I was at somebody's house last night throwing peas at somebody's head. Then I think when I leave, what in the world's wrong with you? <laughs> Jeremy gets in the vehicle. He's like, you are a silly girl. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So come. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit's so strong this morning. I'm going to get through these announcements. October 30 to 6.30 p.m., come and have a good time with us. We love Jesus. We love the Word of God, and we love to have fun. October, I'm telling you. <laughs> Lord, you're so good. I needed this. <laughs> October 26th is going to be a Saturday night, and we have some connect groups going on. We have um, 
What's your connect group called? <laughs> Young adults. I'm sorry. No, it's just Holy Spirit. It's hard to think right now. I'm just enjoying. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm gonna get through this. Yeah, I know. I might just go sit down. October 26 is um. Young adult groups, it's from 5 to 8 p.m., ages 19 to 30, the home of Brittany and Ben. And um, y'all sign up. Make sure y'all sign up because we're going to sign each person to bring something, something small, and this is going to add up, and we're going to do a hot dog roast. And then next age group is the Radical Adults, October 26. Our group, come on, we're going to have the most fun in our group. That's right. And that's at the home of Paul and Jennifer Johnson and all their dogs. That's going to be at 5 p.m. And same setup. We're going to speak the word. We're going to encourage each other. We're going to fellowship and build relationships. If you don't know how to get to anyone's home, just ask them. And again, please sign up. Then we got 50 Forward coming up. Miss Lisa leads that up. It'll be at the home of Nikki and Adam Leach. And that's 5 p.m. So Saturday coming up, it's every meeting's at 5 p.m. So pick your age group and go and be encouraged and fellowship and have a great time with each other. I tell you, that's how the church is built, on the Word of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, and relationships. Where am I? Okay. (laughs) I'm going to get through this. Thomas, did you do a men's meeting here Friday night? Wasn't that great? I know. That was awesome. Thank you for coming and doing that men's meeting and sharing your testimony. Some of that, some of your, yeah, come on. Some of your testimony I did not know, and then some of your testimony you left out. I know it was a lot of details, and there was a lot going on, but your testimony was powerful, and even the other bits that you didn't get to share. That was, that was awesome. So we have a ladies' meeting every year, Overcomer, and the men wanted to do something, so we kind of set it up the same way where there's food, there's worship, preaching, and giveaways, and it was for our guys, but Our church is so on fire. The men were like, can we invite others? Can we open it to the community? And absolutely. So it was an in-reach, but it was also an outreach. And I think about half the guys that were here Friday night were not even members of this church. Some were out of church. Some were from other churches. And men are, you even said this, men appear a little different. They're a little more, you know, stoic and kind of reserved. And that would have been a hard message to preach because I love interaction. I love, but you did well. Like you went through it like nobody was quiet. But I know they're receiving. I know they were chewing on what you were saying. And I believe there was spiritual impartation and people were set free. But sometimes we don't see the effects of it till down the road. So you brought an impartation for sure. So thank you so much for coming. And the generosity of the people here. People, we gave away guns. We gave away nice prizes. And I think people bought with their own money. The church didn't have to buy much. And then um, someone who doesn't even come to this church, I don't even know he's in church, when he found out about the meeting, he was like, I want to donate a gun. So isn't that awesome? Just the generosity. I'll tell you, there's so much love in this church and unity and generosity. It is amazing. But that is the working of the Holy Spirit. And so if you don't attend church regularly, get in. Because when you miss one Sunday, you miss something. Because God is moving. God is moving. So thank you so much. I think um, I'll have, I'm going to take up the offering in just a moment so you can prepare that now. But I think Mallory has something to come and share. Thank you. Um, I just want to honor our pastors. Um, pastoring a church is not an easy task, and I know it's something, not something that you take lightly. Actually, last week you shared the scripture, which is funny because I had already written my notes. But when you shared 2 Timothy 4.2, I had put that in my phone about y'all, and it was preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season, correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instructions. I'm so thankful for your faithful, bold teaching of God's word. I got emotional thinking about this because there's so many things when I came to this church I, I didn't know yet. And I know it's our responsibility to be in the word. But God put y'all in the middle of my family's life to teach us about our power and our authority through Christ and speaking in tongues and just all the things that you just read straight from the word and then explained. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. We hear the word of God from both of you day in and day out. You preach and explain the context and keep in context the word of God. 
It's evident you stay prepared in season and out of season. It's evident that your family's in your word. I see the fruit, the fruit of your children, the fruit of you. I see your hearts through the words that you speak. I hear wisdom from the advice and counsel that you give us. The incorrection. I've, I've, <laughs> my husband's been corrected a lot. But anyway, the correction <laughs> and encouragement you give is just like that scripture says. It's with great patience and careful instruction. And I know correction can be tough. But I've seen you be led by the Holy Spirit instead of your emotions. I've witnessed your gentleness and patience with my family as we grow. I feel the love of the Lord from both of y'all. My family and I would not be where we are today, first and foremost, without the grace of God. He saved us. But without you and this church family. From the day we walked into grace three years ago this Thanksgiving, and every day forward, you have been there for our family. You have shepherded us and loved us, visited us, checked on us. You've set an example of what life in ministry should look like. I cannot express, and I speak for the whole church, the gratitude we have to be led by y'all. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your Christ-like conduct. Thank you for your faith that you have bestowed into each and every one of us. Thank you for answering the call of what God has for you to do day in and day out. We love y'all so much. So I just want to encourage the church to show that love and show that appreciation by giving. This month is Pastor Appreciation Month, and we are so thankful. We are so thankful so um, I know that there's some ways to give. You can give by cash, of course, and just on the envelope, write Pastor Appreciation. You can give by check, same thing, in the memo, write Pastor Appreciation. And then you can give online, and there's a website, and there's a drop-down menu with Pastor Appreciation. We love y'all so much. Well, thank you so much. But my favorite part of that is when you ratted out your husband. That was, that was, <laughs> that was, uh, poor Chad. We weren't going to say anything. <laughs> I tell you, you want to know anything about somebody? You talk to a wife. A wife will tell all. Thank you so much. And you know, I give all that honor and glory back to Jesus because he has done a work in me. Like I said, if you'd have met me 18 years ago, he said, please don't let that be my pastor's wife. You know, said, please don't bring that girl here. Maybe I'll still think that. I don't know. <laughs> so thank you so much. We love y'all. And um, October 27th, which is next Sunday, is our church anniversary. 20 years, Grace. 20 years. It is going to be a potluck after service, so please bring a dish, dessert, bring both. We'll have drinks provided. We'll have fried chicken provided. Just bring something. Bring anything and it's going to be a great time. We're going to be here until Jesus comes back. Amen. We're going to keep on growing, keep on preaching, keep on living holy, keep on. We're just going to keep on, keeping on. So we're going to, the guys can come up with the baskets. Um, I just want to share that when you give into grace, that we also take a portion and sow seed. And so one thing that we do support is Sampan, who is our Cambodian disciple that we raised up, and he pastors village, the village churches that we started, which we plan to maybe go visit next year. And uh, so we do support that. So there's a work going on in Cambodia that maybe you're not aware about, and that when you are sowing financial seed, you are sowing into the souls being saved in a Buddhist nation. Another thing we just recently sowed was a couple thousand dollars into Samaritan's Purse for the disaster relief. Whenever you want to give to, um, like, disaster relief, please do not give to the Red Cross. Be careful who you give to. Samaritan's Purse is um, by Franklin Graham, the son of Billy Graham, and they have integrity. So that's someone you want to sow into, and they have a website you can give. So as a church, we helped support that because they are on the ground and they're going to help with the humanitarian efforts but we know they're also going to preach the gospel and that's what we want so um just to say thank you so much when you give it's being seeds are being spread actually around the world and you might not know it because we're in a little small town but seeds are being spread around the world and as you sow seed if god can get it through you he'll get it to you amen 
So if you have an offering, you can bring it up at this time. Father, we just thank you so much for for Holy Spirit. We thank you for your glory and your presence. Thank you, Jesus, that you give us the power to create wealth, and we honor you with it. We sow it into your kingdom to show you that we trust you, that you are our source. You are our Father, and you take care of all of our needs, not some, all of our needs according to your riches and glory. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, good morning. morning. How's everybody doing? Good deal. Well, uh, Chad, don't run off. Why don't you hand that to Josh? I want to take a moment, and while we're honoring, we're we're to give honor to whom honor is due, and we want to honor Chad and Mallory Hall. I, I got a text message the other day from Lance Seymour, and he does the lawn care around here. He's also a teacher at Quitman, and he said, I have some students in my class that uh, it's very obvious that God is at work in their lives because they are totally different. And so that is a a testament to what you guys are doing. You guys really have partnered with us parents to invest in our children. Your time, your energy, the finances, we have to tell them, look, use the church finances. Stop using your own money to pay for all these kids. Um, but it's, it's very obvious that God is moving and working in and through you. And we are grateful that you have partnered with us as, as parents as, as a church, to train and equip our kids in the ways of the Lord. Yeah. And to see the excitement and the enthusiasm of our young people, the fire that they have, yeah. it's, uh, it's because the fire and zeal that you have for the Lord is contagious. Yeah. And so, why don't you come up here? We want to... Yeah. We want to give you guys a little token of our appreciation and just say we love you. Thank you both. Thank you both for what you do. You guys are a blessing. Just stay right here. Church, would you just extend your hands towards them? Lord, we thank you that the fire continues. Lord, that what you've begun on the inside of them will not stop. They will never go backwards. They will continue to advance forward and fulfill the ministry and calling that you have given to them. Lord, we thank you that they are a blessing. They are a blessing everywhere they go. And so, Lord, we ask for blessings to multiply and come back upon them in a mighty, mighty and profound way. And I declare over them that the anointing will grow. It's going to continue to grow. It's going to grow. The word of God is going to grow. The spirit of the Lord is going to continue to move. And the anointing on the inside of you is going to continue to grow you up and mature you into all the things that God has in store for you. So, Lord, I pray that you would give them a double dose of the Holy Ghost. Lord, let, let, them, let them be drinkers. As they work, they would become drunk in the Holy Ghost. They would learn to drink on the job, drink in this ministry. Lord, you, you said that a farmer, he gets first dibs on what he farms. And so, Lord, let them get first dibs on their messages in Revelation, in anointing, Lord, in your spirit. Lord, we thank you for a fresh wind, a fresh fire that continues to carry them. They will burn brightly all the days of their lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we honor and we bless them. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Well, we have an election right around the corner. And um, to that end, I want to show a video. Why don't you go ahead and play the communism video? 
It's important to remember that communism isn't just something from history books. It's alive and well and dominating the globe, even right here at home in America. They just don't call it communism anymore. Imagine living in a world where every choice you make, what you can do, what you can say, even what you can think, is controlled by someone else. That's what communism is, a system that promises equality, but delivers tyranny. With communism, a small group of people, the government, controls everything. They decide where you work, what you learn, your entire life is under their control. You don't really matter at all. Recognizing communism, even when it's disguised, is the first step to protecting our freedom. It shows up in growing dependence on government aid, indoctrination in schools, and attacks on religion and traditional values. Each of these shifts us toward a system where power is centralized and personal freedoms are lost, all in the name of the collective good. So what can we do about it? Vote for President Trump. He'll eradicate the communist ideology in America, restore our founding principles, and protect our freedoms. America will be great again, and the best is yet to come. Don't mean to be so overt, but you have to make it very clear with people that when you're voting for Kamala, that's what you're voting for. Amen. Just saying. Um, there's another video of Beverly Williams who they arrested and she's about to go to prison for a while because she stood in front of an abortion clinic. Why don't you go ahead and play that? Before you go, I wanted to ask you about one of my friends, Beverly Williams. She was sentenced to three and a half years in prison and it's obviously a political persecution as well. She's an individual who's a very outspoken activist. Uh, they accused her of blocking an abortion clinic entranceway. Uh, sadly, today, she's turning herself into federal prison. Three and a half years, three and a half years in prison. Uh, she's being pulled away from her two young children and her husband right now. Uh, it's horrifying to watch as somebody who knows her. Uh, but what's your take on all of this? Because, again, they're targeting a woman, and it took them two years after the protests even took place. It was when Roe, the decision by the Supreme Court came down, that's when the DOJ launched its investigation into Bev. So it's clear that it's politically motivated, but three and a half years in prison. Mike, what's your reaction to this? This is absolutely outrageous. This is on Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and Merrick Garland, the attorney general, and Lisa Monaco, the deputy attorney general, and most particularly Kristen Clark, the assistant attorney general, for civil rights, they have politicized and weaponized the Federal FACE Act to go after pro-life Christians and persecute them, whether it's this a black woman who's going to prison for three and a half years. I thought the, the Biden-Kamala Justice Department uh, didn't want to persecute black people unless, of course, they're pro-life Christians. They put a 75-year-old Christian in prison, prison under the FACE Act. They put a priest in prison under the FACE Act while they give amnesty to these abortion industry activists from Planned Parenthood and trans terrorists who are terrorizing Catholic churches and crisis pregnancy centers. There must be an investigation about this, uh, this weaponization of the FACE Act the day that President Trump is back in office. Yes, yes, and, and we hope you're a part of that investigation because we need all the hands on deck. You understand it better than anyone. So Mike Davis, thank you for your time. We appreciate it as always. Thank you. So a vote for Kamala is a vote for this and more arrests. Trump said it, he said, when they come after me, they're actually coming after you. I don't know who Insurrection Barbie is, but she tweeted this on uh, Twitter. They put Bannon in prison. They put Navarro in prison. They're trying to bankrupt Gateway Pundit, which is a, a news outlet. They indicted the CFO of Epoch Times. They are investigating Elon Musk. They are trying to put Donald Trump in prison. They are trying to disbar Jeff Clark. They disbarred John Eastman and debanked him, so he's not allowed to bank anymore. He was an attorney for Trump. They arrested the doctor who blew the whistle that a Texas hospital was illegally performing gender reassignment surgeries on minors. 
They indicted and they disbarred New York's favorite mayor, Rudy Giuliani. They spied on Catholic churches. They put concerned parents who went to school board meetings on the FBI watch list. They imprisoned 1,500 protesters, most first-time nonviolent offenders. If you just walked into the, the Capitol with your phone and just kind of filmed and you were praying, you got arrested and imprisoned. But Donald Trump is going to weaponize the government to go after his enemies. So that's, uh, that's what's coming down the pike if uh, Kamala Harris gets elected. So I want to encourage you to uh, register to vote and go out and vote for you know who. Amen. I had a call from uh, Dennis. Anybody, anybody know Dennis? Him and his family, they've been coming around here for, I guess, a couple of months. He called me up yesterday, and he said, I had a dream, and I, I needed to share it with you. He was actually up in the crane. He works at the mill. And he said, I wanted to give, give you all the facts before I, I forget some of these. And so he began to tell me about a dream that he had between 4 and, and 6 a.m. yesterday. And in the dream, he was sitting pr pretty much where you're sitting at, uh, Chad. And there was a guy like right to his left. And the guy in the dream, he looked like he was sleeping. And everybody was kind of aware that this guy, he looked like he was sleeping. And so he said, in the dream, I noticed, and I, I walked on over in the dream up to the guy, and I put my hand on the, the chair, my left hand. And when I went to touch the guy, the guy wasn't sleeping. He was actually waiting. And it was, it was the Lord. And he, he looked up at me and his whole face was glowing and he reached up and he grabbed my face. And Dennis said that my face, the expression on it was inexpressible joy as I realized who was in the room. And uh, that's kind of encouraging when <laughs> somebody shares a dream that the Lord was in the room with us. And I believe that the Lord is in this room. He's already here. You know, we don't have to want, where's God? God is right here, yeah. right now. Heaven is in the room, and whatever need that you have in your life, Jesus is more than willing to meet you. Yeah. So I want to ask you to exercise your faith today. Reach out and grab a hold of everything that God has in store for you. Hallelujah. Listen, <laughs> the Lord Jesus is coming back soon. He's coming back for his bride. How do I know he's coming back soon? All you have to do is look to Israel. And Israel is a key indicator in God's prophetic timeline that when war begins, that the soon return of Christ is going to take place. Did you know that the United States is actually funding both sides of the war? Yep. We give hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars, to Israel to fight the Palestinians. And then we give just as much money to the Palestinians to fight the Jews. Why? Because we just have that much money. We're only $36 trillion in debt. We got it. Anyway, that is a key indicator that Jesus is coming back. In fact, the United States just sent a military battery, a troop of 100 soldiers. So now we are yet in another war. And so anyway, Jesus is coming back soon. I just yeah. felt that in my spirit this last <laughs> week, that Jesus is coming, and he's coming back for his bride in fact, he's coming back for what the Bible says as a pure, holy bride who is ready. Amen. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready for his return? Yes. I mean, the harvest is at hand, and we are to give our, our hearts to the harvest, to look at the lost and go out 
and to reach them with the gospel. But at the same time, there is this cry on the inside of us for the bridegroom. It's, it's Holy Spirit on the inside of us yearning for the marriage supper of the Lamb. And so as a pastor, I'm to pre- help prepare you for that moment of the marriage supper of a Lamb where Jesus himself, he will present himself with his bride. This is what pastors do. This is what the fivefold ministry gifts do. In fact, go with me in your Bible to Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. In Acts chapter 20, we find that the Apostle Paul, he was on his way to Jerusalem. And he did not know exactly what awaited him there. He thought that it would be the end of his life. And so he called for the leaders of the church at Ephesus. And they came and they met him. And the Bible says in verse 18, it says, And when they had come to him, he said to them, You know from the first day that I came to Asia, in what manner I always lived among you. Always lived among you. Serving the Lord with all humility. And with many tears and trials which happened to me by the plotting of the Jews, how I kept back nothing that was helpful. In other words, I told you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I didn't hold anything back. I didn't take the gospel of the kingdom, slice it and dice it up and leave out little parts. I didn't hold anything back, but proclaimed it to you and taught you both publicly and from house to house, testifying to Jews and also to Greeks, repentance toward God. That means that you change, not God. We don't approach God with the mentality that God is like me in some sort of weird, sinful depiction. Amen. That when we come to God, we repent. And faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And see, now I go bound in the Spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies In every city saying to me that chains and tribulations await me. But none of these things move me. Yeah, but Paul, when you get there, they're going to arrest you. I don't care. Yeah, but you're going to be in prison. I don't care. But they could beat you. It doesn't move me. You see, Paul was married to his purpose. A purpose that God gave to him. He was married to his calling no matter the cost. Because there was a a joyous reward that was awaiting him. That's all he saw. That he would please the master. That he would please the father. And so he did not consider the cost. He did not consider his life. He said all those things, they don't move me. But none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself. Wow. So that I may finish my race with joy. Yeah, but what about prison? Hey, I just want to finish my race with joy. But you're going to be like handcuffed and you're going to be in a Roman cell. Think of the food, Paul. I don't care. I just I just want to finish my race with joy. Yeah, but you, you, you won't get to enjoy life and this and that. I don't care. I just want to finish my race with joy, the race that God put me on. What are we living for? You've got to ask yourself, what are you living for? Are you living for the moment? Or are you living for eternity? 
Are you living for yourself to please yourself? Or are you living to please the one who gave his life for you? I want to finish my race with joy. And the ministry which I have received from the Lord Jesus. What ministry is that? Now, notice the verbiage here. To testify to the gospel of the grace of God. To testify of the gospel of the grace of God. I want to hone in on that today. He says in verse 25, And indeed, now I know that you all, among whom I gave, I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, will see my face no more. So these are like, in his mind, he's thinking, these are the final words I'm sharing with the leaders of a church that I started. And, and, and you would think that it would be all fluffy and encouraging. And, but listen to what he says. Therefore, I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men. I'm innocent of the blood of all men. How could he say this? Why? Because he kept nothing back that was helpful. And he said, for I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Everything. I did not shy back away from telling you the truth. Therefore, take heed to yourselves. Watch yourselves, leaders. Watch yourself. Watch your heart. And to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you not sparing the flock, the church, the sheep, the people of God. When I leave, savage wolves will come in. Come on, Paul. These are your, like, your final words. Come on, don't you want to share a nice, lovey-dovey message? He's saying, guys, be careful. Savage wolves will come in to try to take out the sheep. As a pastor, you, you, you notice who's here, who's not here, what, what's going on with people. You just see sometimes how the enemy comes in in some kind of way, shape, offense, boom, out the church. Or sometimes you have a Christian who's not living right, and they're a bad example to someone else, another young believer in the Lord. And the next thing you know, they're out the church. They were waiting for you to mess up, and now that you messed up, boom. We're going to talk about that today. Verse 30, also from among yourselves. Come on, Paul. Give me something good here. Also from among yourselves, men will rise up speaking perverse things. That's the wrong version. Perverse, the wrong version. To draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore, watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. So now, brethren, these are like his final words that he's sharing with these disciples before he gets on a boat and heads out to Jerusalem to go to prison. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word, look at this, of his grace. There's that word again. The word of God's grace. Oh, Pastor Jeremy, I've heard the message on grace so many times. I know all about this. Do you? We'll see. Look at this. Which is able to build you up. The word of grace is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among the saints of God. As the church, we have to recognize, you know, when the angels in Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah had looked up and he saw the throne of God and he saw the Lord sitting on this throne and the, the train of his robe 
had filled the temple. And there was these angelic beings that stood above the throne of God. And these, these seraphim, they, they had wings that would cover their eyes. They had another set of wings that would cover their feet. They had another set of wings that they would, they would fly in the air. And they began to cry one to another saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. They didn't cry, love, love, love is the Lord. Now, is God love? God is love. But in the presence of God, when they saw the fullness of the glory of God, they were saying one to another. And it, it was so loud that the, the doorpost began to shake. They were saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. In fact, the whole earth is full of the Lord. Whenever we begin to see God in all his glory, uh, we see him as holy. The main characteristic and description of God when angelic beings are in his presence, the songs that they begin to sing are holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and who is and who is to come. And when Jesus is coming back for his church, the Bible says that there's one description of the kind of bride that he's coming back for. And that is a, a bride that is without spot and without wrinkle. A, a holy and purified bride. Jesus is coming back for a holy church. He's not coming back for some lukewarm. He's coming back for a holy, holy bride. And so I want you to understand something today. That we are positionally holy in Christ. You know, when Danielle and I got married, we came into a covenant with each other. So she was positionally my wife. I was positionally her husband. Now, before I met Danielle, when I'd see an attractive woman, I'd look to get her number. I'd look to talk to her, right? But once I met Danielle... I stopped doing that because I was in covenant with her. And so behaviorally, I was acting in a holy way that's consecrated unto her. You and I, the day we got born again, Jesus washed away all of our sins and we became positionally holy in him. But how many of you know that we have to work out our salvation with fear and with trembling. Yeah, amen. The Bible says to pursue peace and to pursue holiness without which no one will see God. Amen. So we're holy in Christ positionally. But we have to begin to work out our salvation on a daily basis. Holy living on a daily basis. Yeah. That's behaviorally. Yeah. Are you with me? Look at uh, Hebrews chapter 12. Can you? Yeah, you, you've already got it up. There we go. Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. Let me just finish the rest of the scripture, but I want to come back to that. Lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. Be careful of allowing bitterness in your heart to take root. Because you'll become a Christian that all of a sudden will cause trouble. You'll be divisive. And you'll defile many. Beware of what you allow to grow and to fester in your heart. Keep a clean, pure heart. Protect your heart. Pastor Butch taught us that over the years as people would come and go. In our lives on the mission field, you know, when we moved to Cambodia, there was so many missionaries and there was competition and we were like, what in the world? Why are we competing? There's like millions of people in this country going to hell. There's plenty of fish uh, to go after and catch. I mean, 
And even here in Jackson Parish, there's plenty of people that need to get saved and, and be in churches. So we, we should not be in any sort of competition. Amen. And so we, we saw some of that going on. We try to bless people and take them out to eat. And they would look at us wrong. Like, what are you trying to do here? I, I just was just looking for a friend. Just wanted to bless you. And they would take that wrong, and there would be some sort of offense, and you can't look at, at, after my kids anymore. And Okay, what's going on here? Doing the offense dance. And we'd just pass the butch. We'd, we'd be on FaceTime with him, and he'd, he'd just say, man, keep your heart clean. Keep your heart pure. And so keep your heart pure. Don't allow anything to fester in your heart. But look at this, looking carefully lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. Do you mean I'm not going to make it to heaven? No, that's really not what this is, talk, this is talking about. Grace, there was a survey that was done in 2009 where they surveyed 5,000 evangelical Christians in America. And they asked them to define what is grace. And you know, Americans, they, they, they know a lot about what, what grace is. They, they defined it as receiving the free gift of salvation. They defined it as the forgiveness of sins, receiving the love of God, unmerited favor. And so, so many people, they were answering rightly. But did you know that only 2% of the evangelicals in America in this survey said that grace was an empowerment? To live holy. Listen, God didn't get you saved and then say, all right, now figure this thing out by yourself. Try to be holy. Try to please me. No. He gave us an incredible tool called grace. And we, you know, we just kind of put it in a little box. It's, it's unmerited favor. It is unmerited favor. But it is an empowerment when you begin to see things in this light, then you realize why Paul would write to Timothy. He would write to the Corinthians and he, he said, I pray for mercy. I pray for peace and I pray for grace to be multiplied to you. Grace is an empowerment for you to walk holy, to live pure and undefiled lives. How do you get ready for the soon return of Christ? You tap into the grace that God has for you. It will empower you. Amen. Now Jesus shared a parable about three servants. One servant, he gave five talents. Another servant, he gave two talents. Another servant, he gave one talent. The one that had five talents took those five talents, turned around and multiplied it. The one that had two talents went and multiplied it and brought back two. The one that had one talent took it, and he hid it by burying it. And when the master came back and said, hey, what did you do with the talents that I gave you? He praised, he praised the one. Now, now this is going to take place in heaven, where Jesus is going to divvy out rewards. So the one that was given five talents, he praised him in front of the host of heaven. That's what's going to happen. And he said, enter into the joy of your Lord. The one that had two talents came, multiplied it. He praised him as well and said, enter into the joy of your Lord. But the one that had the one talent that hid and buried it, he said, you know, master, I took you to be a hard man to please. And that you were one of those types that you would reap where you did not sow. So I took what you had and I hid it and I buried it. Here, here's yours. Jesus called that servant a wicked servant and said to go to the outer darkness. Now listen, church, you got to put yourself in that story. God has given you talents. What talent? I don't play guitar. No. If you are born again, that is a gift from above Amen. the bible says that all good gifts come from the father of lights yes. if you're saved 
You've been given a talent. You've been given a beautiful, wonderful gift from above. I want to ask you, what are you doing with that salvation? What are you doing with that wonderful gift that's been given to you? I, I said, Thomas, Thomas took that gift just six years ago and he began to multiply it. He's a plumber. And I, I love Colin Thomas, and he shares with me his testimonies about how he's, he's on the job, and he starts witnessing to somebody in their house while he's changing out their toilet or whatever. And he starts witnessing to them and ministering to them and laying hands on them and shakara bakara, you know, and praying for them. They get healed. They get saved. So what is Th- Thomas is taking what he is, has been given to him, and he's multiplying it. And eventually... Thomas, he starts reaching to men in the church and just starts making disciples long before anybody called him a pastor or ordained him. Why? Because he had it in his heart. He took this gift and he began to grow it and it began to grow and grow and grow. And he's sharing with the men. He's making disciples until it got to the point where everybody just, hey, Pastor Thomas. And he wasn't looking for recognition. He wasn't looking for any of these things. He just took what he had and he multiplied it. Jaden, she's getting with the youth here real soon, and she's going to tar- start teaching them how to play some of these instruments. What does she do? She's taken the gift, the talent that God has given to her, and she's multiplying it. Well, I'm not good at playing keyboard. Well, what are you good at? Are, 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 maybe you're good at, at making money. You, you can take that and multiply it and bless churches. You can bless the kingdom of God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So salvation. What are you doing with your salvation? Ha- have you taken your salvation and hid it and buried it? And no one even knows if you're a Christian on the job? Like if you were arrested, they brought you to trial. To see if you were a Christian. Is there enough evidence in your life? Yeah, yeah, this, this is a Christian. What are you doing with that wonderful gift that's been given to you? So good. What about the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Amen. I got touched in 1900. And... <laughs> okay. What are you doing with that touch? Was that the last time you got touched? Maybe you're not seeking heaven then. Because he is all... mm, There's... Yeah, yeah, he's he's here right now. (laughs) Uh, uh, Hello, hello. (laughs) Woo! Mm. Mm -mm -mm. What's the... This is is a baptism. This is an immersion in the presence of the Lord, in the Holy Ghost. Which, by the way, I'm telling you, you don't have to do this all by yourself. I'm trying to get ready for his return, and I'm trying, I'm trying. You've been given the Holy Spirit that will help you be holy behaviorally. What are you doing with Holy Spirit? Do you talk to Holy Spirit? Or do you just ignore him? Try that with your your spouse and see what happens. (laughs) Well, (laughs) what are you doing with that baptism of the Holy Ghost that enables you to lay hands on the sick and see them recover? That gives you a, a heavenly prayer. What are you doing with shakarabasokorebishiketzo? Are you taking that and just hiding it and burying it and not doing anything with it? Because listen, one day you will have to give an account of your life. What did you do with the gifts that I gave you? Let me tell you about another gift you've been given. If you come to Grace Community Church, oh, this is a gift. Danielle and I, we were fulfilling our calling, our purpose 
10,000 miles in a country called Cambodia. I was, we were about our father's business. I, I would think about America every once in a while. Man, I see what's going on in America. I'd love to go back. But hey, I'm doing what God's called me to do. God saw that. And he, <laughs> he had us jump on an airplane. A 25-hour flight to get to the United States of America and called us to come up here to Jonesboro. Who's ever heard of Jonesboro? <laughs> Jonesboro, Louisiana. Who's ever heard of Addis? Louisiana. Brulee. Where's that? Right. We have two red lights now. You have two red lights now. Wow. <laughs> Moving on up <laughs> to the east side. <laughs> But God called Danielle and I to this church. If you're in this church, under the teachings that Holy Spirit gives to Danielle and I, you've been given a gift. Somebody told me, after six months of being here, they said, I've learned more in six months in this church than I did in 50 years of going to my denominational church. I'm like, wow, Lord, thank you for using me. Young people, you've been given a gift with Chad and Mallory. Radical youth group. (laughs) There are a lot of churches that don't have what you have. What are you doing with it? What are you doing with it? There's a men's group here. We gather together. Tonight we're going to be getting together. It is a treasure to get together with brothers in Christ, and of course the ladies meet as well. But this is a gift from the, what are you doing with it? Are you taking it and using it and multiplying it? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Well, how about grace? What are you doing with grace? You see, when we stand before the Lord one day and we have to give an account for our lives, he's going to say, what did you do with grace? How did you respond to grace? Listen, our lives, everything that we built, it's going to have to go through a fire test. And, And if we've built our lives with our own ideas, culture's ideas, if we built our lives with those words, those concepts, those ideas, if you will, there will be nothing left when it goes through the fire test. I don't know about you, but I don't want to stand before the Lord and when he brings my life, what I built through that fire test, that he looks at me and says, there's nothing there but Hey, at least you made it. (laughs) Thanks. Only what you build with God's word, Jesus' word, will last. Are you living for that moment? I know I am. I just want to hear the words, job well done, my good and faithful servant. So listen, there is a grace that is available for you. It is a grace to empower you to to walk in holiness, to walk in newness of life. You don't have to do this all by yourself. You've got a Holy Spirit that will come beside you and empower you with this grace so that you could be holy. Amen. Amen. Grace to empower. Grace to empower. What you doing with the grace? Josh, what you doing with the grace? Paul, what you doing with grace? Hallelujah. Come over here, Paul. I thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you for a fresh measure of grace. Mm. Fresh measure of grace. Oh, oh. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Lord. Where are you going? Where are you going? Oh, 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 oh. Grace as an empowerment. Grace as an empowerment. Grace as an empowerment. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Grace. Grace. Who wants some of this grace? Come up here. You want some of this? Come up here. There's an impartation, an impartation of grace that's going to be poured out today. Grace. 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 To prepare you. To ready you for the soon return of the Lord. The soon return of the Lord. Grace. Grace. Grace, grace to ready you. Grace to ready you. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's preparing his bride. He's preparing his bride. Grace is an empowerment. Grace is an empowerment. Grace, 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 grace. Oh, oh, there it is. Oh, oh, hey. Ah. Grace to empower. Grace to empower. I'm telling you, the fire gods in this place, get ready. Don't get your eyes on me. Just look to Jesus. Just look to Jesus. Grace. Grace. There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. There's the empowerment. There's the empowerment. Holy Spirit's going to prepare you as a bride, as a bride, as a bride, as a bride, as a bride. Grace, 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 more, more, more. Grace and empowerment. Grace is an empowerment. Grace, there it is, there it is, there it is. Oh, yeah, there it is. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Grace, grace, grace. Yeah. Ikatara, rokotore. Grace, grace, grace. Ah, ara, rakatore. Grace, grace. Oh. Hallelujah. Grace, grace. Grace is an empowerment. Preparing the bride. He's preparing his bride. He's preparing his bride. He's preparing his bride. Grace, grace, great more, 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 more. Fire, 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 the fire of God. Readying his bride, pure, pure and holy, pure and holy, holy. Ida katara bashakure bishakedzum. Give her some more, Lord. Give her more. Give her more. Whoa, yeah. 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 Hallelujah. More. 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 It's preparation time. It's preparation time. It's preparation time. Allow God to prepare you. Allow the Lord to prepare you. To get you ready. For the wedding. Supper of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. This drink. This drink from His presence today. This is a revival church. We don't shy back from it. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for meeting every need. Every need. Lord, thank you for the young people who are leading the way. Think of it. Young people leading the way in hunger. Ida 
More, 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 more. More, 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 more. What are you going to do with heaven's touch? Lord, let it multiply. Let it multiply. Let it multiply. 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 Ikatara bashakore beshetezora mundera bakore. Ikatara bashatore beshetezora mundera bakore beshetezora. Era makatara bashatore beshetezora mundera bakore. Reketero bakore beshetezora. Ara bakore beshetezora mundera bakore beshetezora. Ia la mane doro bakore beshetezora mundera bakore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wherever you're seated, just go ahead and take a little drink. Take a drink. Let that drink become a river on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God doesn't want you to just have a well. He wants you to tap into the river. Let the river which rages consume you. Get you some, Josh. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Rakata rabakure beshetezo. Ira kata rabakure beshekezo romanero bakure. Ikatere bekedo roboshotore beshetezo. Rikiti arabashatore beshetezo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that your power didn't stop 2,000 years ago at Pentecost, but it's continued on to these last days. Thank you that we get to drink. Thank you that the power to heal didn't end with the, the apostles. Thank you, Lord. The power to deliver did not end with the apostles. He who believes, he who believes, We'll lay hands on the sick. We'll cast out devils. Hallelujah. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. You can't receive this with the head. You cannot receive this with your head. You can have, the only way that you can receive this is via your spirit. That's the only way. Hallelujah. The Bible says, These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man, the carnal man, the man that's thinking on, on this natural world, and that's, that's where they stop. The natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God for they are foolishness to him. The natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. Well, I, I don't know why I'm not getting touched. Well, this may seem foolish to you, but you may be caught up in your natural thinking. You can only receive this via the Spirit. For they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. That means that what God is doing right here, this is something that's spiritual. You have to spiritually grab a hold of it, spiritually discern it. The context of what Paul was talking about, he says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, I didn't come to you with excellence of speech or of wisdom declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much preaching. I'm sorry, much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit 
and power of God. This is what this is. This is a demonstration of the spirit and power of God. You know, I think as the church, so many in the church, we look at the cross as sort of the the centerpiece for Christianity. In fact, people wear necklaces with a cross on it, bracelets with a cross on it. They put a a cross on the outside of the church, and that's all fine. And then he had someone that that came here. The first time they came here, they said, you know, you know what your, your church is missing is a cross. Okay. Thank God for the cross, because the cross is where Jesus paid the price for our sin, our sickness, our disease, and our poverty. But I tell you, the power is in the empty tomb. (laughs) We ought to be wearing little necklaces with a stone and a hole in it. Because Jesus is no longer on an empty cross. (laughs) That should be our little centerpiece. He's not in the tomb anymore. He rose from the dead. Amen. His death was our death, but his resurrection is our resurrection. This is resurrection power that we're tapping into today. Thank God for the cross. We we run to the cross and, and we receive mercy. We receive you know, salvation, but listen, you have to confess with your mouth. You have to believe in your heart that Jesus rose from the dead, that he came out of that tomb. You have to believe that. Can't be just here. It's got to be here. The Bible says if we carry around his, his death with us, then we'll carry around his life his resurrection power and life. That's what you're meant to walk in. Resurrection power. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whoo. How you doing, Jennifer? You good? Millie. It's good to see you up at the bar. Coming up for a drink. You guys just look better in the glory. Y'all didn't get that. You guys look better in the glory. We got to see each other according to the spirit. This is where the Lord's calling people. He's dealing with hearts. He's purifying. He's working in us. It's in this presence. Josh, what do you think heaven is going to be like? (laughs) But this is a taste. The Bible says to taste and see that God is good, that we can taste of the powers of the age to come. Some of you were doing a little bit more than just tasting that. Y'all were like double dipping. and This is awesome. Heaven is going to be wild. If you think this is crazy, wait till you get to heaven. You're going to be like. You know, the Bible says that the Lord is going to wipe away every tear. I believe every one of us, we're going to be like, I could have done that. I could have walked in this all the time. I could have laid hands on the sick and seen them. Yeah. You can do that. You ought to try it sometime. Amen. Well, I bless you. Tonight we have a meeting, a men's meeting. Ladies meeting at 6 o'clock. Yeah. Thank, I want to thank everyone for 
your commitment to uh, that men's meeting that we had. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for everything that you invested. We got some, we got some servants here in this house. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. So, next Sunday is the twentieth year anniversary. Be sure to invite someone. I want to see the place packed. So, if you hadn't seen somebody in a while around here, give them a call. Give them the church. Do whatever you got to do. Pay them. Whatever you got to do. We'll take you out to lunch. Something. Free lunch afterwards, that's right. <laughs> Amen. Well, God bless you.